An accomplished ophthalmologist turned politician, Patrick Ho served as a secretary in the SAR government before devoting himself to civil diplomacy. A U.S. court has sentenced him to three years in jail and a 400,000 U.S. dollar fine for bribery and money laundering. Hong Kong Connection probed the case following the trial, the personal and material evidence disclosed, to reconstruct how Patrick Ho, as Secretary General of the China Energy Fund Committee, used his ties with a former UN General Assembly President to build a network spanning Africa, and the Middle East, Central America and Eastern Europe, and whether his actions have anything to do with China's Belt and Road Initiative. Patrick Chair met Patrick Ho when the latter became a bureau secretary. Three years ago, Chair set up the Integrity of Public Officials Concern Group. He immediately invited Patrick Ho to be the honorary chairman. When Ho was convicted of bribery, Patrick Che remained steadfast in his trust in Ho. Hello, we hold our book. Patrick Chair sometimes goes to the mainland with finance professionals and has many friends in politics and business. He notes Patrick Ho has always had a patriotic image. But this time, officials were provoked in sensitive matters, so political and business circles refrained from making high profile statements, only showing sympathy in private. Besides Patrick Ho, the key protagonist in the case were also the mainland private enterprise CEFC China Energy and its think tank, China Energy Fund Committee. The committee was established in Hong Kong in 2010 as a non-governmental body engaged in energy and cultural diplomacy. After Patrick Ho was arrested, our reporter last year visited the think tank's office in Wan Chai. No one was at work. The Belt and Road Initiative is a bridge connecting the China dream with the world, with the American dream, and into the world dream. As the Secretary General of the China Energy Fund Committee, Patrick Ho was active in the past few years, until the end of 2017, when he was arrested by the U.S. government. Eight charges state in his role in the committee between 2014 and 2016, he bribed African heads of state and senior officials with 2.9 million US dollars, or about 23 million Hong Kong dollars, in exchange for CEFC China Energy's interests in oil exploitation in African countries. Hong Kong Connections reporter went to the U.S. court hearing the case to review documents and evidence and found more extensive involvement than initially disclosed. Mm -hmm. 
charges mentioned a middleman introduced Patrick Ho to African officials. This can be seen as the source of the whole case. This mysterious person's identity was only exposed at the trial. He was the president of the 67th session of the UN General Assembly, former Serbian foreign minister Vuk Jeremic. Data from many sources show in November 2012, Patrick Ho and Jeremic, then UN General Assembly president, met for the first time at a China Energy Fund Committee event. At the end of December, Jeremic met with President Xi Jinping in Beijing, then visited Hong Kong at the invitation of Patrick Ho. Two months later, at Jeremic's recommendation, Ho became the first Chinese to speak at a UN Interfaith Week. In March and early April 2013, accompanied by Jeremic, CEFC China Energy representatives and the chief executive of the Mexican National Oil Company reached a cooperative consensus on oil field exploitation. The next day, the CEO went with the president of Mexico to the Baoao Forum and signed an agreement to increase oil exports to China. Patrick Ho arranged for Jeremich to give the keynote speech at the forum. In June of the same year, Xi Jinping went to Mexico for a state visit. During this period, CEFC China Energy also paid a reciprocal visit to the Mexican National Oil Company to discuss cooperation. Entry and exit records in Patrick Ho's passport show he was in Mexico at the time. Here we are in front of the courtroom. It's been a long morning, and the main witness in U.S. versus Ho has been Vuk Yeremich, former president of the General Assembly. Vuk Yeremich, as soon as he left being PGA, applied to be a consultant for a Shanghai-based business company. Veteran American investigative reporter Matthew Russell Lee specializes in U.N. news. For the vital case of Patrick Ho, he attended the trial daily, delivering detailed reports. He once interviewed Jeremich in the elevator. But what he testified to is very troubling. It showed that while he was the president of the General Assembly, he was working for CFC China Energy. He took their money. He emailed with them. He did a lot of things. So I, it, it's surprising to me that the prosecutors, all the focus was on Patrick Ho, and they used his testimony to show how Patrick Ho made the connection. But in fact, what Yeremich did may be worse for the public. I said, how could you work for a private business while you, were, while you were president of the General Assembly? He said, I'm not the defendant here. Matthew scrutinized Patrick Ho's and Jeremich's emails disclosed in court and said he disagreed with Jeremich, responding to media inquiries that he didn't commit a crime. They show that even while Vuk Yeremich was, his job was president of the General Assembly. He was doing a deal on something called potash, which is, I guess, it's potassium, it's a mineral, for CEFC. And he also, I'm now reading it even more closely, he was promising Patrick Ho that he could be a speaker in an event in the, in the UN on a panel with President Gul of Turkey and President Zuma of South Africa. This is while he's already working for them. I 所以我覺得何志平案本身不是一個純粹民間的行為 Jeremich revealed in court cross-examination that after being UN General Assembly President, 
he received at least 2.3 million US dollars from CEFC China Energy and its fund committee as a consultant and think tank member. A Serbian parliamentary document showed the fund committee hired Jeremic as a strategic advisor immediately after his departure as General Assembly President. Through the Serbian company's registry, we found that a day after leaving the presidency, Jeremic immediately set up a think tank that included as consultants a state witness in the Patrick Ho case, Sheikh Gadio, and a Chinese Communist Party Central Committee member, Li Wei. We'll have more relevant information after the break. Serbian independent media anti-dots investigations in 2017, before Patrick Ho's arrest, revealed the relationship between China Energy Fund Committee, CEFC China Energy, and Vuk Jeremic, the 67th UN General Assembly President. Hong Kong Connections reporter contacted the media editor, Markle, and obtained records provided by a local informant detailing the dates, amounts, and donor information of overseas contributions received by Jeremic's think tank. In order to verify the information, the reporter located a company in Hong Kong that said to have signed with the Serbian government an energy cooperation memorandum to verify it had donated money to the think tank. In the end, the company replied to the reporter in writing. It confirmed donating to the think tank in 2014 and 2016 for academic research and publications, emphasizing no conflict of interest between its donations and the company's projects in Serbia. The information showed CEFC China Energy, its China Energy Fund Committee, and a related company donated nearly 4 million US dollars to Jeremich's think tank, together with the 1.3 million US dollars consultant fee admitted in court. The fund committee and CEFC China Energy paid nearly 5.3 million US dollars, or more than 40 million Hong Kong dollars. We tried to email and phone CEFC China Energy, but to no avail. We went to two related companies registered at the same address in a Wan Chai commercial building and found the office didn't even have a sign. The person in charge of the office later told us there's no way to contact the two companies. After Patrick Ho's arrest, CEFC China Energy Chairman Ye Jianming was immediately accused of economic crimes and arrested by the mainland government. The group has to sell its assets to pay off debts. The office at Convention Plaza office tower was empty. The China Energy Fund Committee's office in the same building has been sold. Mangan 
出問題。咁所以我覺得所謂香港角色，我哋自己要諗清楚。In reconstructing the links between the Fund Committee and Jeremich, Hong Kong Connection noted the Chinese government's presence and the main theme of the Belt and Road Initiative. In early September 2013, President Xi Jinping first proposed the Silk Road Economic Belt concept. In the same period, Jeremich established a think tank with CPC Central Committee member and State Council Development Research Center Director Li Wei as an advisor. The two met often. In July 2014, Jeremich led a delegation to Mongolia, meeting the Mongolian president. Records in Patrick Ho's passport show he also visited Mongolia in the same period. And Antidot has information the China Energy Fund Committee during this time donated 1 million US dollars to Jeremich's think tank. During that period, President Xi Jinping was invited for a state visit to Mongolia to strengthen cooperation in the Belt and Road. In the same period, CEFC China Energy and Patrick Ho, mediated by Jeremich, went on to another Belt and Road country to discuss cooperation in the United Arab Emirates. Between 2014 and 15, the State Council Development Research Center and Jeremich's think tank jointly held many forums to promote the Belt and Road Initiative, and along with the China Energy Fund Committee, set up the Silk Road International Think Tank Network, also in that period, CEFC China energy-related firms donated to the think tank 1.49 million US dollars. In May 2016, after Jeremich announced his candidacy for UN Secretary General, Li Wei met with the Serbian Prime Minister at his invitation. A month later, a CEFC China energy-related company donated another 1.47 million US dollars to the think tank. Matthew served as a UN correspondent for many years. Since the beginning of last year, he's repeatedly questioned the current UN Secretary General whether he'd conduct an independent investigation into Patrick Ho's case, but to no avail. There's a verdict. China Energy Fund Committee. Seven counts of bribery at the UN, selling weapons for oil to Chad. No audit. Absolute corruption. No comment on the bribery case? Shocking. Half a year ago, Matthew was accused of not complying with interview rules and disqualified from reporting within the United Nations. But he said he won't give up on the case. You find that at least two countries, in the case of Patrick Ho, Chad, up to the level of the president, who was presented with cash in a box, and an offer of weapons for oil, and the foreign minister of Uganda, who remains the foreign minister of Uganda, $500,000 by wire, they were paid bribes for access to natural resources. Although Patrick Ho is only charged with bribing African officials, the prosecution has found Patrick Ho also assisted Iran in purchasing precious metal, and even acted as an intermediary in arms trading in Libya Qatar and South Sudan. 成件事 out of proportion 嘅，你表面去睇，佢一個失敗嘅 deal maker， 幸亏嘅數目都唔係咁大。但係點解美國會咁樣 expose 出嚟咧？我相信美國係已經即係開始去圍堵或者係阻截啊！呢一啲用基金會嘅名義，用民間致富嘅名義去滲透美國致富同埋學術界，去製造一種親中輿論嘅行為，係視為咩咧？視為一種敵對嘅行為。嗱喺中美關係好嗰陣時，其實冇問題嘅。Last December, Patrick Ho was convicted by a jury of seven violations of overseas anti-corruption laws and money laundering. After the case came to light, the Chinese Foreign Ministry responded it didn't know the specific situation. Hong Kong officialdom also reacted coldly. Patrick Ho was a minister under Chief Executive Tung Chi Hua, who didn't respond to media inquiries. Patrick Che and Patrick Ho have known each other for more than a decade. He still trusts Ho's character. 
He's repeatedly hinted that Ho is a victim of a complex political environment. But he also says he doesn't dare to evaluate who's right or wrong. He says he's shrouded by the Patrick Ho incident and will be very cautious in doing anything in the future. Hong 